Uh, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. So hi, everyone. This is Aristotle with Real Wealth. And thanks for joining us today on our Thursday educational webinar. And today we're talking about tax savings with cost segregation. And this is a really uh, amazing topic. We really have never, well, I should say we never spoken about it, but we talk, uh, we talk about this topic with our uh, with some of our tax attorneys that we have on throughout the, the last several years, but we've never had a webinar just talking about cost segregation. And, and today uh, we have a new partner with Real Wealth and uh, their name is RE Cost Seg. And today we have Zach Prince with RE Cost Seg. How are you doing today, Zach? Doing great, Aristotle. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're really happy to really happy to have you on today and to talk about this interesting topic because not many people know about it. And if you do know about it, maybe it's confusing and it's so kind of confusing to me a little bit. But I've been learning a lot about what you guys are doing and how the whole process works. I'm really excited to to talk about this today. So, um, so thanks for coming on. Um, go ahead. We're going to go ahead and dive into it. Go ahead, advance to the next slide. I'll get a couple things out of the way before we dive into the the educational portion of it. I'm not going to read it word for word, but basically it says, you know, seek your own personal accountant, tax advisor, and or attorney to discuss your situation. Uh, we at Real Wealth do not give you tax advice or anything like that. Um, and so we're just saying to, to seek out legal professionals. We do have legal professionals on our website, but um, if you um, have questions about that, and we're not talking about properties particular today, so we don't need to talk about uh, investment risk per se. But in general, yeah, just, just always consult with your professional advisor. So Zach, let's uh, let's dive in. Oh, before we dive into it, we do have one. Let everyone know we have a the, the question box uh, on the uh, on the top right of your panel. So as we're going along the presentation, feel free to write any question in. Presentation will be about 25, 30 minutes or so, and then we're going to save some time at the end for some questions. So please ask any questions you have as we're going along here, and I will get to them, and we will get to them at the end. So, uh, so Zach, yeah, and thanks for joining us again today, and let's dive dive into what cost segregation is and what your company can do to um, to offer to our members regarding cost segregation. Yeah, hi everybody, and thanks again for having me on, Aristotle. I'm really excited to be here and be partnered with you and the rest of the uh, Real Wealth team. There's a um, to your point earlier about being excited as you've learned about cost segregation. There's a saying in the I guess, cost segregation study world that there's two types of real estate investors. There's real estate investors who do cost segregation studies on almost every property that they own, if not every property that they own. And then there's real estate investors who haven't heard about cost segregation studies yet. So it's a, it's a uh, very valuable tool for folks. And at the core of what cost segregation studies do, is they are helping real estate investors to maximize the depreciation benefits that are already built into the US tax code. And at RE Cost Seg, we specialize just in being a leading provider of cost segregation studies. And these studies help investment property owners accelerate your, their depreciation, reduce the tax burden. And by doing that, you improve your overall cash flow and that wealth snowball of owning investment properties can roll down the hill even faster with this tool of cost segregation studies. Uh, we've been around since uh, early 2022, so coming up on you know three years here pretty soon, and we've completed over 2,500 studies for our clients and saved them over $250 million in taxes. So let's talk about the basics. What is a cost segregation study? How does it work? So. If you own a piece of investment property in the U.S., there are benefits in the in the tax code that come along with owning investment properties. One of those benefits is that you are able to depreciate the value of that property over a fixed schedule. This is by default. You don't need a cost segregation study to do this. If you own an investment property and you have a CPA or you're doing your own taxes, you're probably doing what's called straight line depreciation. And so for single family homes, that means you can take one over 27.5, roughly 1 27th of the property value excluding land, and you can take a depreciation expense of that on your taxes every year. What does a depreciation expense do? A depreciation expense offsets income that you're generating from that property or other properties or assets that create passive income for you. So by default, 127th you can use as a deduction every year. 
a cost segregation study breaks down all of the components of your property and puts them into shorter depreciable lives. And as a result, you're able to capture more of that depreciation faster. So oftentimes we see in the single family home segment, uh, in the first year with a cost segregation study, folks are able to depreciate 20 to 50% of the value of that property in year one. And so the net effect of this is that you're holding on to the cash flow that your property or properties are generating longer, foregoing making tax payments on passive income longer. And as a result, you have more cash available to reinvest in new properties or you know, do whatever you want with it, which is obviously better than uh, handing it over um, to the IRS. So that's the core of a cost segregation study. We're looking at the components of the property, we're adjusting that depreciation schedule and front loading more of the depreciation. Who should get a cost segregation study? I like to say that there are two filters for whether or not a cost segregation should could be valuable to someone. The first is whether or not they own investment property. Investment property means property that is uh, you know, primarily used for rental purposes or you know, income generating purposes. It's not your primary house. It's not your vacation house if you go there for you know, more than a few weeks out of the year. Uh, it's property that was purchased you know, as an investment and is primarily operated as some form of rental usually. Uh, so that's the first qualifier. The second qualifier is, do you have taxable passive income? If these two things are true, you have taxable passive income and you own investment property, there's a very high probability, close to 100% probability, that a cost segregation study would be valuable for you. Yeah, and Zach, would you say that, well, I, I would just say and add to that is that, you know, who should get a cost seg? Uh, you know, we, we talk here at Real Wealth, uh, the investment counselors, including myself, Leah and Joe, we talk with clients um, all the time who, you know, they invest they are investing primarily because they need tax benefits and you know buying one rental property typically won't you know and depreciating like you said every year the straight line depreciation method that is not going to make an impact on your on your taxable income necessarily but doing this if you if you really need uh, let's say you're a high income earner uh you know and you really and let's say example you live in california or a high state income tax state uh, you know, and you you have high income and you need to shelter that. This is a great way to do that. And just even off of one off of a single family home, for example, right? I mean, that would be an example. That's absolutely correct, Aristotle. It's a it's a great tool to offset uh, not just passive income, but in certain scenarios, you can also use the depreciation to offset other forms of income, like active or W two income. And we have a lot of clients uh, that do that. And later on in the presentation, we're going to look at a case study from a single family home to put some real numbers on, OK, you know, with a real life example of a, of a property that was purchased recently by one of our clients. What do these numbers actually you know, back out to in terms of the accelerated depreciation and the tax benefit? But let's talk about something that you touched on. So um, I mentioned passive income on this previous slide, but there's also ways and scenarios where you can use the depreciation from a cost seg study to offset active income. And there are two different ways uh, that someone could potentially use the depreciation to offset their active or W-2 income. The first is when someone qualifies as a real estate professional. Uh, and the second is when the property is operated as a short term rental and the property owner passes the material participation test. So by default, you can go against passive income. If one of these two things is true, you can go against active income. So let's explore these a little bit further. What's the definition of a real estate professional? Uh, more than half of the work or personal services that uh, someone does every year must be performed in real property trades or businesses in which the taxpayer materially participates. And the taxpayer must perform more than 750 hours of services during the tax year in those real property trades or businesses. So what are some examples of these types of things? If you have a job in property development, construction, uh, real estate acquisition, you know, rental uh, management, um, real estate brokerage, you know, anything in that realm, there's a really good chance that you qualify as a real estate professional. 
Of course, none of this is specific tax advice based on your individual scenario. You should always talk to a CPA, but we have a lot of clients who you know, do work in these fields, uh, and as a result, they can use the depreciation to offset their active income. Second way you can use it to offset active income is what's commonly referred to as the short-term rental loophole. Let me just get to the next slide. So the short-term rental loophole, you can think of as being available if you own a short-term rental and you are operating that short-term rental. You're overseeing the operations of that short-term rental yourself. You're not outsourcing you know, the legwork to a property management firm. On this slide is the specific definition of what constitutes material participation in the eyes of the IRS in terms of accessing the short-term rental loophole. Now, you just have to satisfy at least one of these seven things. So I'm not gonna read all seven, but I will say that most of our clients that we see utilizing the short-term rental loophole are utilizing it by leveraging point number seven here. So demonstrating regular, continuous, and provable participation in the business for more than 100 hours a year. So that's the second way. If you have a short-term rental, you're managing it. You can meet one out of these seven things. You can use the depreciation from a cost segregation study to offset your active income. Uh, if you if you Google short-term rental loophole or you work with one of the uh, you know other fantastic partners that I know Real Wealth has in the you know CPA realm, they will definitely know about this and be able to consult with you about your specific situation and whether you qualify as a real estate professional or if you could potentially take advantage of the short-term rental loophole. So how does the process of getting a cost segregation study done work? Uh, I wanna let everyone know that the first step is really easy and it's completely free. At RE Cost Seg, the first step for us with every property and every client that we work with is we create a free proposal. Um, basically, we gather a few points of data from the potential client, property address, purchase price, whether or not there was any you know, significant capital invested in renovations, uh, and uh, the date that the property was placed into service, rented out. And then we take that data, we analyze it, we compare it to you know, other properties that we've done studies on, and we provide a free proposal that tells the client, here's the range of estimated depreciation that we think we can offer you with a cost segregation study. And we provide a conservative and optimistic range and a few pages about how the process works, what the depreciation schedule would look like if they got a study, and also the cost of the study. Um, so that's completely free, that's the first step. Second step in getting a cost segregation study done is that our team of engineers will review the details that have been provided. And for most of our clients, they're using uh, what's called our fully engineered product and they're scheduling a virtual site visit. So what that means is our engineer will work with either the property owner or uh, the property manager or a tenant or a cleaning person, somebody who has access to the property will do a video call our engineer will get a video walkthrough of the property. They'll use that video walkthrough to gather the information that we need to produce the cost segregation study. And then we do the study. Uh, we do the study, we produce a comprehensive study with all of the details that um, you would want to know in summary form, but also all of the nitty gritty details that uh, your accountant or CPA would need to be able to input this correctly into your taxes so that you receive the benefits. And that whole process end to end usually takes four weeks max, uh, oftentimes, you know, two or three weeks if we can get that site visit scheduled in a, in a timely fashion. So to talk just a little bit more about RE cost seg. So, you know, now that we've touched on what is a cost seg at, at a fundamental level, a little bit about our story. So our firm was started in 2022 by two co-founders, one who was a real estate investor focused primarily in the self-storage asset class. And the other was his CPA. And they were getting cost segregation studies done on this self-storage portfolio. And they just thought that it was too expensive, too slow, and a really inefficient process relative to what it could be if they built a firm that was powered by technology and had kind of a digital first mindset and so they started RE Cost Seg with the idea of making this entire process of cost segregation 
more accessible, uh, delivered at a better price, uh, with the same value as traditional, you know, providers in terms of the output of the study. We're also big believers here in education. You know, I personally didn't know what a cost segregation study was a year ago, and I've been a real estate investor for close to a decade. And one of my single family homes, when I learned about cost segregation studies, I got a proposal from RE Cost Seg. I took it to my CPA. I said, would getting a cost segregation study be a good idea? My CPA said, absolutely, it's a no brainer. You should definitely do it. And I said, well, why haven't you mentioned this to me before? And he said, I didn't think you could do cost segregation studies on single family homes. I thought it was only for commercial properties. Well, RE cost seg, about a little over half of the cost segregation studies that we do are on single family homes. And the price points that we're able to deliver our cost segregation studies at, you'll see later in the case study, are at a level where it can make sense for a single family homeowner. And that's a relatively new trend in the cost segregation study industry, that this product has become available and accessible to folks in the single family home investment category and delivered by firms like ours at price points where the ROI is, is really there for any size of real estate investor. We have a team now of uh, over 40 people at RE Cost Seg, about half of the team is engineers. This is some of the leaders at the company here. Mitchell Baldridge is one of the co-founders and the CPA who's still with us as a managing director. Uh, some of the folks on this slide you might interact with if you end up getting a, you know, a proposal or a cost segregation study done with us. But we have a team of just over 40 folks now uh, on standby to help you with proposals or cost segregation studies. And we have expertise across property types. I know that um, a lot of the focus at Real Wealth is on you know, single family homes, whether that's long or short term rentals, but we also work with uh, commercial properties of all shapes and sizes and types. We've done cost segregation studies on gas stations, uh, nursing homes, restaurants, large multifamily apartment buildings, golf courses, really you know, across, the across the gamut of real estate property types, there's, uh, there's a good chance we've, gonna, we've done a cost segregation study on one before. Hey, Zach, I've got a question here from Josh, uh, just related to that. He's asking, can you do it to mobile homes or like a mobile home on land that I can park? Absolutely. Mobile home parks are actually one of the higher value asset types to do a cost segregation study on because so much of the uh, property in a mobile home park has a short depreciable life. So... You know, I mentioned earlier that for a single family home, we will typically see 20 to 50 percent uh, of the property basis as a, you know, accelerated depreciation in year one. With mobile home parks, that can be as high as 60, 70, even 80 percent of the purchase price uh, that you would get back as a depreciation expense in year one with a cost segregation study. So mobile homes and mobile home parks are phenomenal candidates with absolutely amazing results from cost segregation studies. Awesome, thanks. And thank you for the question, Josh. <laughs> so uh, we we deliver cost segregation studies at RE Cost Seg in um, two different ways. We think of these as different products, but the product in both of these is a cost segregation study. But I just wanna touch briefly on what we call our rapid report and a fully engineered study. So. Think of the rapid report as something that's a little bit more of a do-it-yourself option. And the rapid report is something that's available only for residential properties that have a $800,000 or less depreciable basis and less than 2,500 square feet. If those things are true about the property, you could potentially use a rapid report. Um, rapid reports in terms of how we complete them, the information about the property and the materials in the property are provided to us by the homeowner or a partner of the homeowner. Contrast that to a fully engineered study, which we can do on any property type. And for the fully engineered study, we're either doing a virtual or in-person site visit. Our engineers are getting that video tour of the property, and we're using that to collect the information that we need to complete the study. So rapid report has self-provided information from the homeowner. Fully engineered study, our engineer is viewing the property to collect the information that we need. And there's a difference in these in terms of uh, the cost. So a rapid report costs $895 and a fully engineered study 
starts at $2,150, $2,150. So if you meet those first two buckets of uh, less than $800,000 purchase price and less than 2,500 square feet, we can you know, share with you the information that we would need for you to use the rapid report and you could potentially access that option. If you know that you don't have the information about all these different property components and you're more of a kind of hands-off person like I am, then fully engineered study and the virtual site visit is probably gonna be more uh, up your alley. And, and, and I'll tell you, when uh, I talked to you before, Zach, when we first met a few months ago, is that um, from my research and talking with our attorneys that we work with and everything else in the industry, um, 21, what do you say, how much the full study was, 2150? 2150. That's correct. Yeah. So I, I've seen, you know, I've seen companies charging 3,500, 5,500, um, even like 8,500 for a single family home. So uh, you guys are definitely, um, you mentioned earlier the story about the founders, how they, they thought it was too expensive. You guys are definitely the lowest company that I've seen that would do a full study like that because everything else is at least, at almost double the price. So I think what you guys are, 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 are charging is uh, phenomenal, in my opinion. Yeah, and look, we we pride ourselves on being a uh, very competitive, if not the the you know best priced cost segregation study provider in the market. Um, I my experience has been the same as yours, Aristotle. When I've done you know cost segregation studies on my properties and gotten quotes from a few different providers, every time you know RE cost seg has been. 30, 40, even 50% cheaper than some of the other options in the market. Um, and it's for the exact same output, you know, the, the quality of our study, uh, we provide audit protection in a, you know, a scenario where someone gets audited, we'll stand behind our study and do whatever we need to do working with the client CPA for, uh, you know, for that audit. And so, um, yeah, really this is, this is possible for us because we've built some proprietary technology and we have a distributed team. Uh, so, you know, we don't have a office building in downtown Manhattan that everybody comes into every day and the business has to, you know, pay rent for every month. We've got a distributed team. We've built a lot of really great tech and we're doing our site visits mainly virtually. So you're not paying for someone's airline ticket <laughs> to fly out to your property. And we pass on the savings from all of those items to our clients in the cost of the study. So let's look at a, let's look at a specific example. So I have an example here from a uh, single family home that was a, that was a long-term rental. Um, this is a, a relatively recent study that we did. Um, this is a uh, client who in 2023 acquired a single family rental building in California for, for $623,000. Um, they worked with RE CostSeg to do a cost segregation study and uh, we were able to get them a first year tax savings of uh, over $23,000, which was an 11.8 to one payback ratio relative to the cost of the study. So uh, we'll see on the next slide here, uh, the cost of the study in this case was $2,000. So, you know, sometimes we are low, even lower than 2150, but I use that number as a, as a kind of guiding point. The cost of this study was $2,000. The estimated first year tax savings, which we calculated based on looking at the depreciation in year one, which after the study was $63,000 versus how much depreciation they would have had in year one without a study, which was $2,500. And then we take that number and multiply it on an, based on an estimated tax rate of 37%. When you do that math, you end up with the $23,000 first year tax savings. And when you compare that to the $2,000 cost of the study, you're getting a little over 11 to one ROI on spending that $2,000 for the study. Pretty amazing. So, and, that's, and, and so somebody could do, I know you're not a tax accountant, but so in your in this study, they bought it last year, let's just say in 2024. So somebody could buy a property and then and a year later do the cost seg. Yeah, we we normally advise folks to, you know, do the cost seg as early on in the property's, uh, you know, operations as, as you can. Um, the reason for that is if you, uh, if you buy the property and have operated it and filed, you know, taxes on it, uh, you will have already started doing straight line depreciation. 
And in that scenario, you can still do a cost segregation study, but you will need to file what's called a form 3115. Form 3115 is uh, just a form that lets the IRS know that you're switching the depreciation schedule for a property that you've already placed in service. We can produce those forms for you. We generally produce the forms cheaper than, uh, than CPA firms. So, you know, we charge $750 for 3115 form preparation. So if you don't do the cost segregation study in the first tax year that you own the property, you'll need to do a 3115. You'll still get phenomenal benefits, but there'll be a little bit of an incremental cost to have either us or your CPA, your CPA prepare that 3115 form for you. So I generally tell folks, you know, uh, do the cost segregation study in the first year that you own the property. If there's a scenario where, you know, you're not able to use this full, whoops, didn't mean to go forward, uh, where you're not able to use this full $63,000 of depreciation um, in that tax year that you bought the property, it rolls over to the next tax year. So this is not a, you know, use it or lose it type of uh, tax deduction. This is a tax deduction that carries over until you've used every penny of it. Yeah, because so, imagine, I was gonna say, imagine if you, if you, um, let's say you own a business and you had massive losses, you can carry that forward to whenever you need it, the loss, or, the, or not the loss, yeah. but the, 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 um, the, the depreciation. That's exactly right. Um, it, it carries over, it's like a, you know, it's, it's like a piggy bank that you'll just use whatever amount you need each year. And one of the things I tell folks, you know, uh, to do is leverage that free proposal step that we have to spark the conversation with your CPA. And when your CPA is looking at numbers like the ones I'm sharing from this case study that you'll get with the free proposal, they'll be able to tell you, hey, actually, you know, based on last year or what our projection is for this year, you should be able to use all of this depreciation or a large chunk of it. So, you know, the ROI will really be there for you with this study. Um, I, I always tell everyone that it's, you know, recommended to have a conversation with your CPA before completing the cost segregation study, just so that they're aware you're getting it done so that you can make sure you have a, a plan for where the depreciation is gonna be used in your tax returns. Um, and we're happy to, you know, help talk with your CPA as well. If you have a CPA who, for whatever reason, is not that well-versed in cost segregation studies, we're happy to do group calls. We're happy to walk them through either the proposal or the final cost segregation study results if they have any questions. So the thing I wanted to call out on this slide is in the bottom left here, this is a visual of what happens uh, when you do a cost segregation study versus without a study. So you can see with a study, which is the light blue line, there's a lot of depreciation in year one and then a you know, kind of steady amount of depreciation in years you know, two through 27.5. And then you compare that to without a study, which is the dark blue line. And basically without a cost segregation study, ultimately you get the same amount of depreciation. You're just getting it all a little bit at a time over 27 and a half years. And so that's where you really see the value. You can get all of this depreciation in year one, instead of waiting and taking it little by little, uh, which is what you will be doing without a cost segregation study. So if this is interesting, if you think it might be you know, relevant for you, if you are uh, interested in getting a free proposal for an investment property that you own, please um, go to recostseg.com slash real wealth. And you can, you know, click the free proposal button, fill out a few pieces of information about your property. Our team will reach out. We also have a phone number on our website. If you want to give us a call, you can also ask Aristotle or uh, whoever your contacts are at Real Wealth to just make an introduction for you and they'll connect you with us over email. We would, uh, we would absolutely love to chat with you. And that's all I have for the, uh, the presentation. I have a couple of our social media handles here in addition to the recostseg.com slash real wealth link. Um, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at, uh, at recostseg. And we're also on LinkedIn if you want to follow us on uh, social media. And um, that's it. I'd love to take any uh, additional questions that uh, folks might have. Yeah, great, Zach. This is, thanks. It's a great, 
brief, simple explanation into what it is and what you do. I just so people who are still on, I put in the chat box, I put the link to uh, the CrossFit site to that link there. So if you guys want to click on it, you can go in the chat box here and click on that. Um, but yeah, let's roll into some questions. I appreciate that. Let's see here. Let's go. We got a lot of questions here. It's great. Um, let's see here. Um, okay. Albert asking in a 1031 exchange, cost segregation is recommended for the replacement properties. Why cost segregation is not recommended on the relinquished property? I don't know if you know that question. Yeah. So, um, when you're doing a 1031 exchange, you're uh, selling one property and buying another. Um, and I, I think what the question is stating is, why is it recommended to get a cost segregation study on the new property that you're acquiring, but not the property that you're relinquishing? And the reason for that is there's a concept of basis recapture when you sell a property. So another thing we generally tell folks in terms of when cost segregation studies are relevant is you want it to be on a property that you're going to hold for at least three years. If you are, you know, buying a property, doing some renovations, like doing a fix and flip type of strategy where your, your hold time is going to be less than a year or less than two years, we generally don't recommend cost segregation studies. And the reason for that is basis recapture. So basically when you sell a property, if you've done a cost segregation study, the IRS looks at how much depreciation you already took relative to your hold time, and it'll recapture some of that depreciation. Um, now, the beauty of a 1031 study is that it enables you to forego not only any gain that you might have on the sale of the property, but it also enables you to forego any taxes you might owe from basis recapture. But the reason that you don't do a cost segregation study on a property that you're about to sell is that because of the basis recapture, you're not really going to have any time to benefit from accelerating depreciation because you're selling that property. But you do want to do a cost segregation study on the new property that you're buying after the 1031 exchange because presumably you'll be holding that property for some period of time. And as a result, front loading the depreciation and you know, using it to offset as much uh, income as you possibly can now versus later will will be ROI positive for you. Hope that answers Perfect. the question. It gets a little complicated with 1031s and in uh, basis recapture, but I hope that was clear. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, okay, Maggie asks, can cost segregation be done with the investment for real, for a real estate syndication? Uh, it can be. So. Um, the like the LLC that the syndicator has created would be the one that needs to do the study, the actual owner of the property. Um, but what we often see with our clients who are, you know, syndicators or other types of, you know, uh, real estate asset managers is that they'll do a cost segregation study and they'll pass through that depreciation to the investors or LPs in the properties. So when you get your, you know, I would, I would presume you're getting a K-1 from a real estate syndication that you've invested in. There's some depreciation pass through on there. The question to ask your, you know, partner that you're investing with for that syndication is, hey, are you passing through straight line depreciation or are y'all doing a cost segregation study? Uh, and if you're doing a cost segregation study, what is the split? of where that depreciation goes between the investor and the um, operator of the of the syndication or the general partner of the asset management vehicle. Um, I've seen things where, you know, the the depreciation is split, you know, 50 50 between the GPs and the LPs or, you know, I've seen syndications where the syndicator keeps all of the depreciation for themselves. It's a smart question to ask. If you're considering an investment in a syndication or a real estate fund, you know, is passing through accelerated depreciation from cost segregation studies part of the strategy? If so, how does that depreciation get split up between the various investors in the vehicle? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Michael's uh, saying, I own several condos in Venita Springs, Florida, on the Gulf of Mexico. All the rentals only is a cost segregation study worthwhile under the scenario. Well, that's a pretty open question, right? But 
Um, I, I mean, I, I would, I, I mean, you can answer this too, Zach, but I would just say, yeah, contact Zach and his company to find out what that would be worth, you know, because uh, everyone's scenario is different, right? Zach is not a tax accountant. He can't tell you, yeah, you should do it. But if you've owned them for many years and you need tax benefit uh, or if you need depreciation, I would say, yeah, contact them and find out. Makes my recommend, yeah, my I, I'd say there's a, a pretty high probability. You know, we do a lot of cost segregation studies on condos. Pretty high probability that a cost segregation study would be valuable for you. And my recommendation would be just what you said, Aristotle. Get a free proposal. It'll take you know less than five minutes of your time to fill out the information we need at recostseg.com/realwealth and take that free proposal to your CPA and say, I'm thinking about doing this. Does it make sense? And uh, he should be able to answer, he or she should be able to answer that for you pretty quickly. Perfect. Okay. James says, is there a minimum dollar value of the property that makes sense to get a cost seg? So there, there are minimums with your, with your, with the, the, the rapid one, right? It's like 400,000 max. That's maximum, I think, right? Yeah, that's a max. There's, there's not really a minimum, but, um, you know, I think as a general rule, once you get below like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar purchase price, uh, it can be a bit challenging to make the math work just in terms of the cost of the study relative to you know how much property value you have to depreciate. So I would say on the low end, you know, one hundred and fifty thousand dollar property and up is where co we typically see cost segregation uh, making sense. Yeah, that's good to know because some people uh, over the years have asked us. You know, I bought a house in Indianapolis for one hundred eighty thousand. It doesn't make sense to do cost. I guess. Well, if if it costs you twenty one fifty to do it, and you're going to get, you know, six thousand, you know, uh, depreciation. I don't know. It might. It just depends, I guess, on the situation. But it could make sense, like you said. That's right. That's right. And um, some, you know, oftentimes, um, but it, there's also some interplay of land value. So you know, you can't depreciate the land value, and so it depends a little bit on. You know where the property is located so you know a hundred thousand dollar property in california is probably almost entirely land value versus a hundred thousand dollar property in uh you know somewhere in kansas like in rural kansas the land isn't probably worth as much the property is probably most of that value so you're right aristotle it depends on the on the situation Okay, let's see here. Tor is asking, can I do one from our recent DST purchase? I don't think you can do cost seg on DSTs, can you? What's a DST? Uh, Delaware Statutory Trust. It's like it's almost like a REIT or you know group type of thing. I actually don't know the answer to that question. I'm happy to uh, check and I'll make a note if you. Um... I can I can send it to Aristotle or if you want to email me directly, my email is Zach, Z-A-C at recostseg.com. Um, but I will check whether you can do it on a DST. I would assume the trust is paying taxes for itself. And to the extent that it's an investment property for the trust that's generating income, it, it, it could potentially be a thing that the that the trust could do. So but but I but I don't know. And I'll, I'm making a note to uh, check on that. Okay. Um, let's see here. Someone's asking about, does it make financial sense to do a cost seg on a studio apartment? Again, it can. Uh, it, it absolutely can. I would encourage you to um, take the step of, you know, the, the quick and easy step of getting a free proposal so that you can see hard numbers about, you know, what the cost of a study would be uh, and what the potential range of depreciation that you would get out of a study would be for your specific property. And then, Based on those results, uh, make an informed decision. Okay, Albert's asking if the C if a, if his CP has questions about the cost seg study that you perform, can they call you? And if so, is there an extra charge for that? Yes, they can call us, and no, there's not an extra charge. Oh, cool, awesome. Yeah, because like you said, you're the the um, the the full study, the engineer signs off on it, and then you have a CPA that signs off on, on that as well for IRS purposes. That's right. Our, our managing partner, uh, Mitchell Baldridge. Um, and so, yes, we, you know, we're on the phone with CPAs, you know, on behalf of our clients all the time. And it's very common that when we complete a study, uh, we deliver it to the client, they share it with their CPA, their CPA has a question or two, they send those over via email or we schedule time 
you know, we schedule a, a conference call to, you know, talk them through the results and answer any questions that they might have. And that's no additional cost. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Okay. Um, Paul's asking any downside to cost segregation of doing an exchange, another 1031 exchange, does the accelerated depreciation always need to be recaptured? Um, there's a, it doesn't always need to be recaptured. Um, without getting too much into the weeds, uh, it depends on, it's a function of how long you hold the property. And there's actually two different kind of property types when you, when you drill into the details of basis recapture, there's 1245 property and I forget the number code of the other type of the property. Um, but you know, at the core of the question, I think is this, like, is there a downside where, you know, because you did a cost segregation study, you might be penalized for that at some point when you sell the property. And the answer to that is definitively no. You're never going to pay more in a, in a recapture scenario than you would have paid without a cost segregation study. Conceptually, you can think of the value that you're getting from a cost segregation study as kind of like an interest-free loan from the IRS. You would have had to pay them some money. You did a cost segregation study and you have accelerated depreciation, so you didn't have to pay that money then. Basis recapture is a way for the IRS to try and make sure they're getting that back at some point. 1031s allow you to keep kicking that can down the road for both the capital gains and the depreciation uh, buckets. Um, and, you know, ultimately what we see a lot of our clients do is, um, you know, pa pass on, ten, basically buy 1031 and, and die. And sorry to be morbid, but if, and then, you know, on death, if you're passing it on to, you know, heirs or family members, um, they get a step up in basis. So the step up in basis removes any exposure to basis recapture that could exist if you're selling a property and not doing a 1031 exchange. But there's no scenario where you're going to be paying more in taxes because you did a cost segregation study than you would have paid without doing a cost segregation study. Yeah, that's a good point. Awesome. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions here before we wrap up here. Uh, someone's saying on your website, it says, if you are planning on renovating your property, we recommend performing a cost seg prior to those renovations. Why? Um, you know, we have, it, it depends, I would say it depends on the size of the renovation. Uh, you know, there are cost segregation studies, uh, on renovations can be a bit more complicated because there's a, there's an incremental amount of information to gather and you have to kind of bucket some of the components, uh, a little bit differently into the actual study. I actually don't think that's blanket advice you know, to always do a cost segregation study before the renovation. I think it depends on the, you know, on the scenario, on the size of the renovation. Um, I actually think for single family homes, uh, it's probably more advisable to get a cost segregation study done after the renovation. For commercial properties, it's a little bit different. Um, you might want to do one cost seg before, you know, the major renovation work and then another cost seg after. Um, but we're happy to look at, you know, a specific situation and give folks guidance based on the property and the potential renovations or the planned renovations as to what the best timing would be from our from our point of view. OK, thank you. Let's see. Winston's asked, he says, I've been taking normal depreciation on my rental homes for several years. Is it an advantage to me at this time to do a cost seg study to claim the advanced depreciation? Yeah, again, it'll just uh, depend on the specific details around that. You know, the the value of a cost segregation study does decrease a little bit the longer you've held the property because you've already depreci depreciated some of the value. Um, but, you know, we've done cost segregation studies for, you know, properties that uh, have already been using straight line depreciation for 10 years. Um, you know, I would say once you get past like 15 years or so, it's maybe harder to justify, but I would recommend you get the free proposal, see what the you know actual numbers would look like based on your property and your length of uh, ownership and, um, you know, make the decision based on, uh, you know, real numbers. 
perfect. Um, here's a, here's a great question that kind of relates to some of the, the the properties that we offer. Can I do a cost segregation on a brand new construction property? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. We do that all. We do that all the time. Yeah, it's great. So, like for example, you know, someone someone is interested in buying a duplex or a single family home, brand new, and you just maybe need tax write offs or more depreciation write off, and so you can do that after the first year you buy it. That's pretty cool on a brand new home. That That's makes right. up for the that makes up for a little bit of the uh, the lower return on those. That's great. Um, Albert saying my CPA questions the validity of virtual study, which I guess would be a rapid study that, um, as you cannot see behind the walls, cabins, etc. What do you think about that? Is that kind of true to say? Well, when we're doing our when we're doing our virtual studies, we are you know having folks open cabinets. We're looking behind walls. We're uh, we're really going you know everywhere in the house that you would need to to do a comprehensive cost segregation study virtually. What the IRS guidelines say and what they require is that cost segregation studies are completed by a qualified engineer. And so whether it's our fully engineered study, which we're mainly doing virtual site visits for, but we can do an in-person site visit um, if a client requests it or if the size and complexity of the project is such that um, you know, it's going to take multiple hours to you know, walk the entire property, we'll, we'll send someone out there for that. Um, but even our rapid report product, uh, it leverages software, but it's not fully utilizing software to complete the study. We still have an engineer that looks at the output, QAs the data. Um, and so our reading of the rules are that it's not the rules are not prescriptive as to whether there has to be an in-person site visit or a virtual site visit or you know a data collection about the property from potentially the developer even is something that we've done. Um, What's important is that the study is completed by a qualified engineer. And every single study that we do is completed by a qualified engineer. Uh, you know, th and that has that has stood up in in audits uh, for our clients. So uh, we're very confident that the IRS is comfortable with virtual site visits being an acceptable methodology for completing a study. Ah, perfect. Great. Well, so that's all the questions we have. Uh, so I would say at this point, if you guys, if anyone saw on the call or the webinar here, if you have any like, you know, uh, you know, a lot, lot of technical questions, I can start with your CPA first. Uh, that's what I would do to see if it makes sense. Ask them about cost seg. If they know nothing about it, maybe switch to a CPA who does. But uh, but talk with them about it, see if it makes sense. And then if you have any, just you know, if you have other questions, of course, contact Zach and his company here. Uh, they're here to help you out. So. Uh, there's our information on the screen on our website under when you log into real wealth under the resource tab you'll see uh, cost segregation there and you can click on this company and this webinar will be posted there in a couple of days if you want to replay that or rewatch the replay and uh, their information contact information is there too so zach thanks for coming on and taking all these barrage of questions and informing us about all this this great stuff about your company and what cost i can do appreciate it Thank you, Aristotle, and thanks, everybody, for the great questions. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out, and we'll look forward to hearing from you. All right. Thanks again, everyone.